Hello again, and in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to perform an outer forearm W-shaped block. The W-shaped block is used to protect you against a kick or a hand attack aiming for your philtrum or areas above. Now you can use the outer forearm and position your arms like this if you are against one opponent or like this when you're against two opponents. But you can also use knife hand and reverse knife hand against two opponents. But I'll be showing you how to do this block with the outer forearm. And here's an example of how you can use it against a single attacker. So you can see why we call it a W-shaped block, because the position of the arms resembles a W, whether you're going against one opponent or two opponents. Now it's mainly done in sitting stance, and in the case of one opponent, you have to do it in sitting stance, but against two opponents, it can also be done in walking stance, whether using outer forearm, knife hand, or reverse knife hand. But it can also be done in parallel stance, close stance, one leg stance and X stance. But I'll be covering it with sitting stance using the outer forearm. And I'll be showing you how to do it against one opponent and two opponents. Now very often when we're against one opponent, we do it with a stamping motion. So this makes it a good exercise for building leg strength. And that's one of the reasons why we practice this technique. And the twisting, action as you stamp helps to accentuate the hip jerk like that so you generate power from the abdomen okay whenever you do stamping motion in taekwondo you should have your foot about knee level no higher and when you stamp you stamp with the sole of the foot you don't stamp with the heel you kind of slapping the foot down otherwise you'll do damage to your knee the best thing is to Rotate 90 degrees at the end, short and sharp, a twist like that. So you need to be facing this way and turn 90 degrees as you stamp. Very often people rotate too much in one move like this. One, two, and they're rotating very slowly. Okay, so you don't, don't accentuate that hip action. Okay, so I suggest you pivot twice. One to get into this position and two to do the drop and that bit should be very short and sharp. So there's really two pivots. There is a bit of sine wave, so you go relax up, down, but it's very, very slight. You shouldn't go up and down too much, but it's very slight. It helps you to get the coordination. So as you relax and come up, you pivot a little bit and then you pivot very sharp on the way down. Okay. And remember to keep the elbows below the shoulder it's about temple level okay now where to look you will see everyone performs it like this which kind of doesn't make sense because if you've got one opponent you should be looking at your opponent and i did ask general che i had a long discussion with him once in a seminar about this i said shouldn't you be looking where the opponent is and he he kind of argued the case for two opponents i agree when you have two opponents you've got to look straight ahead can't look at either one but with one opponent why not look at one in the end of this long discussion he did agree that I had a point but still from that day they were still practicing like this I suppose they wanted to keep symmetry in the movement it looks much better doing this than this okay so a good compromise is to look at the opponent until the very last moment so you look straight ahead and then as you block you can look straight ahead to keep the symmetry. Helps to keep the patterns looking very neat and tidy. Uh, very often people ask whether they should twist the arms. General Che used to say not to twist. There's no need to twist because you're getting a lot of power from the rotation, from the waist. So that's short and sharp, powerful, so no need to twist. But a lot of people like to twist. He said, that's fine. You know, if you want to twist, fine, but don't wave the arms around. You know, what he doesn't want is this waving the arms. He wanted people to keep that position more or less stable, see, like that, okay? Not to wave them too much. So practice this technique going forward and back in sitting stance.
When you're blocking against two opponents, your arms shouldn't be straight as if you're doing it against one opponent. Your arms go out 45 degrees like that. Okay? But still keep the elbows below the shoulder level okay? and look straight ahead. This one's quite simple because it hasn't got a stamping motion. But you can practice it with sliding motion. There is a, an example where you do sliding motion, but only when you're doing it in sitting stance. If you're doing it in walking stance, you'll be doing it in stepping motion. But practice it with sliding motion. It's a good exercise. The very last pattern, Pong Yul Tu, has this movement. Okay? So you cross the arms, palms facing you, and you twist it outwards like that at the same time. So you shift like that. Okay? So practice sliding across in one direction and the other. As I mentioned earlier, the W-shaped block can also be done with a knife hand and the reverse knife hand but it's done slightly differently. So I'll be covering that when I cover black belt patterns. Now an interesting thing about the naming of the technique. In English, we call it a double shaped block, but in Korean it is San Maki. Now, San means mountain. So in Korean, they call it a mountain block. And the symbol for a mountain in Korean and Chinese, it's like this. It's, it resembles the shape of the technique. And another thing, when you do the block, you do stand firm like a mountain. So a lot of similarities there to the naming of the technique. Okay? Now, uh, next lesson, I'll be covering how to do a pushing block. And there's various kinds. So please join me for that one. See you next time. Bye.